Today's effort is to serve the people of Spotsylvania, Virginia, and to all who come this way to realize that they are on historical grounds. This marker focuses attention on history. This marker is an obvious reminder that this site where our John J. Wrights, our A.L. Scotts, our Ethel Damages, our P.C. Rocks, our Sadie Combs, our Rosa Dysons, our Russell Robinsons, and our Christine Tylers. And to those who yet live among us, our Cleo Comans, our Dennis Wickwards, our Doc Robinson, our James Dysons, our Connie Braxton, our Roger G.I. Braxton, did I leave out anyone? All of you, all of you have left and will live, leave your mark on history. I began John D. Wright in 1948 when the uh, Supreme, uh, Supreme Court had ruled in, in 1896 that separate but equal was good. Amen. As long as you gave black folks the same kind of equality that you gave white folks in material and money and stuff like that, it was okay to stay separate. And as you know, anybody who attended John Gerard, I'm, I'm uh, finished in 1959, but as you know, the materials that we got were handed down to us from up the street. And some of the desks that came here had the N-word on it and a whole bunch of other pejoratives. Uh, but that's what we got. Now, we were fortunate because we had, from the first grade to the 11th grade, black teachers, black principal, black coach, black uh, uh, band leader, and they kept us focused on our purpose here. Everybody was poor. Uh, but the kids were disciplined. I actually attended this school as my middle school in the 70s. I spent sixth to eighth grade here. And it's funny to me how life has a way of bringing things full circle. As a broadcaster nowadays, and I, I speak everywhere and I'm able to record things all over, the, all over the world and all over the place. I realized that the first time I was ever on a microphone was in this school. And it was because of the kind and caring staff of that office brought me in and allowed me to make the morning announcements. <laughs> now, I know that seems a little odd and I know it may sound a little funny, but it just goes back to the power of possibilities. Where would I have been had I not realized that that was something that I could do? They were able to see that in me and they allowed me to do that. And as a result, here we stand today. So. Thank you, John J. Wright. Thank you for that, that foresight and thank you for that mentorship. For that, I will forever be grateful to you. Seven girls strode forth to enter the white schools of Spotsylvania County. Uh, now, as time passes and the witnesses to the civil rights movement leave us, Americans on a national level increasingly see the process of desegregation as a passage from darkness to light. Uh, but of those seven girls, they did not pass from darkness to light. They came from here. They came from this community, a place of bright light, of tremendous energy, uh, and the community that swirled around them. Now, in this area, we are fortunate to live in a place where the big ideas of history take human form. The stories of courage and devotion, wisdom, endurance, fortitude, they're all around us. People come from all over the world to learn of the people and stories that took place here in Spotsylvania County. Today we give recognition by the placement of this sign to a place that embodies essential elements of our nation. But this is no battlefield. It's not a grand architectural masterpiece. It's not the workplace of presidents or legislators. It's a school, once and still the heart of a community. It's a school, but really that's not even exactly right. 
This place is as I have learned its people. The teachers who walked the halls and scribbled on blackboards and coached and advised, and I have, as I have heard over and over again, inspired young people. And the children whose childhoods still echo on these grounds and in these halls, children who emerged from this place to become teachers themselves, and pilots and soldiers and mothers and fathers and servants of God and a thousand other things, children who emerged from here and helped change the world in countless ways, small and large. This is a place that calls on us not to recall the responsibilities and contributions of others, but of yourselves, of your kin, of your ancestors, your neighbors, your community. The health of our nation is rooted in its everyday life, dependent upon our response to simple but monumental challenges, to raise our children well, to practice charity, to pursue justice relentlessly, and to be honorable. This is a priceless legacy reflected vividly here in this place, on these grounds, and one we can only justify by repetition, generation after generation. So when evil or oppression once again rises before us, will we be our by our collective action be prepared to force it into submission? Are we, with simple acts of determination, prepared to carry forward that struggle for equality that has enriched the life of every single American and, in fact, overspread the world? Are we worthy successors to those seven girls from John J. Wright and the community around him, their families, and the countless others from these halls who every day still challenge America to be better? Will we, can we, keep the true, truly historic light of this place, the John J. Wright School, burning and bright. So our hope is that this new sign, that this new attention on this place and the sharing of your stories will be a constant reminder of our challenge and what ought to be our response to it.